Hello everyone, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. And in this video we're going to talk about eigenfunctions of linear time invariant systems. What we're going to see in this video is that complex exponential inputs are eigenfunctions of LTI systems, which means that if I, the input to an LTI system is an exponential, the output is guaranteed to be an, an exponential with the same exponent, just scaled by a constant, uh, although that constant uh, will depend on the exponent. And that's just a consequence of the convolution integral. Uh, but it's also the gateway to all the frequency domain methods we're going to use this semester in the class. Uh, so let me show you where that comes from when we switch over to the whiteboard now. So for an LTI system, we know that we can find the output for any input from the convolution integral. Right? That we can say y of t is equal to uh, h of tau x of t minus tau d tau integrated from minus infinity to plus infinity. So let's look at what happens if we set the input to be a function e to the st. And this question came up in class the other day when we were working on uh, differential equations and, and someone asked, well, why do we often guess e to the st for the answer for the homogeneous solution? And we'll see that's because for LTI systems, it turns out to be an eigenfunction. So it's a very, it's a natural solution to differential equations. So if we plug this into our, our equation above, I'm going to put this in for x of t, or x of t minus tau up here. The integral becomes uh, y of t is equal to the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of h of tau e to the s t minus tau d tau. And so looking at this, we can say, well, I can use properties of exponentials to rewrite that, that e to the st as a product of two, e to the st minus tau as a product of two exponentials. So let me use this and, and, and uh, rewrite the integral using that product. And when I do that, I can now look at this and say, you know, this, this first e to the st here, this term doesn't depend on tau, so I can bring it outside the integral. Right? And when I do that and look at it this way, I can say, well, now my output is the same e to the st I put in times this other thing over here that doesn't depend on t. Right? This, this integral now, I should have put a box around it. This is just a constant. Well, it's a constant in the sense it's not changing with time with t. It is a function of s, though. So this, this whole box is a function h of s. We call this the system function. And so if I scoot things up a little bit to give myself some room. Right, what I've shown, just starting from the convolution integral, not really setting out to say anything about frequency, is that if my input to an LTI system is a complex exponential, e to the st, my output will be the same exponential function scaled by h of s, this is the system function, where h of s is this integral in the blue box. That's the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of h of tau e to the minus s tau d tau. Right, so that's a very important property and a very remarkable property. It also explains why e to the st is a good thing to guess for a differential equation, because if that differential equation is implementing a linear time invariant system, that that kind of output is very natural to the system, right? Th th those are outputs that are very natural to LTI systems. And so that we can also express this graphically. Some people find it easier that way. Let me get a clean page. What we've just shown mathematically is that if I have a linear time invariant system where the input x of t is e to the st, that the output of this system will always be the same e to the st scaled by a gain or a constant that depends on s. And again, that h of s is this integral of the impulse response. So there's a one-to-one -one mapping between the impulse response, h of t, and the system function, h of s. OK, so that's the eigenfunction property at its heart. It's also the key for all of our frequency domain approaches. So let me, let me show you where that comes from on the next page. Actually, I lied. I'll do it right here on this page. So imagine, knowing the system is LTI, suppose I took 
that same input e to the st. Well, maybe I'll say, well, I'll, I'm going to scale it by some constant a sub k for the choice s sub k, where s sub k is just a particular choice. Right? If this is my input over here, and I go through the system, my output, well, LTI says I just scale my output by the same thing as the input. And we say, well, what if I want more than one S? What if I took a sum of these over an infinite set of different choices of S of K? Well, again, LTI says I would just... Uh, Oh, I've, I've lost something very important on the right-hand side. It would be a, a, the same scaling thing, but I, I still have my H of S over here, too. Let me clean that up. So what we have now, again, is we say, well, for each E to the S T with different choices of S, we're, we're denoting by S sub K here with the subscript K, each one of them gets scaled by a different gain, by its, its individual gain H of S sub K. So for each value of S, I have a different gain for the system function. And they all still got scaled by the same a sub k that was part of the input. And then linearity says if I add a bunch of inputs, I add their outputs. And so I've, I've now found this connection. And this is, is the heart of uh, Fourier transformer frequency domain filtering, saying that I can, if I can write my input signal as a, as a, a weighted sum of exponentials, my output will also be the same weighted sum, but where the weights have all been scaled by the system function for each exponential. So that's sort of a, a preview of where we're going or what the eigenfunction property is good for. I'm going to stop this video here, and in the next video, we're going to go on and use this to develop the continuous time Fourier series to show that this pr eigenfunction property is the basis uh, for the continuous time Fourier series. All right, so that's all for this time. I will see you in the next video.